Good afternoon students. Today we are going to see example 2.6 in page number 51. The question is, without actual division, classify the decimal expansion of the following numbers as terminating or non-terminating and recurring. The question they given as a fraction format. We should find without actual divide, find terminating or non-terminating and recurring. For this method we have one format that is formula is P divided by 2 power M into 5 power N. In the denominator place, you are having this for format that is called a terminating decimal expansion. If the format is not like this, that is non-terminating and recurring. Now come to the question. 13 by 64 the given. 13 by 64 is equal to, in the numerator place, you write as it is. In the denominator number you should factorize. So I am taking this one 64 factorizing. In 2 table I am factorizing. You will get 32. Again 2 table 1 6. 2 table 8. 2 table 4. Then 2 table 2. 2 table 1. How many 2 will get? 1 2 3 4 5 6. So that can be written as 2 power 6. 64 is 2 power 6. But our format is, what is that format? P divided by 2 power M into 5 power N. This one is, I am writing is 13 divided by 2 power 6. We already write this one. Here, 5 value is not present. So, we can write 5 power 0. 5 power 0 is value is what? 1. Anything power 0 value is 1. So, we can write this one as 5, 5 power 0. That value is 1. 1 into 2 power 6 you will get as usual 2 power 6. Now with this format is you are having 2 power something and 5 power something. Therefore that fraction is 13 by 64 has a terminating decimal expansion. Fifth question in exercise. Without actual division find which of the following racial numbers have terminating decimal expansion. What I explained that question only. The first one, 7 divided by 128. Question I have written, solution 7 divided by 128 is equal to 7 divided by 128. You factorize in the rough column, 2 table it is 64, then 2 table you will get 32, 2 table it is 16, 2 table you will get 8, 2 table it is 4, 2 table 2, 2 table it is 1. How many 2 you will get? Here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, that can be written as 2 power 7. Instead of 128, we can write 2 power 7. Our format is what? P divided by 2 power M into 5 power N is there. Means, it is a terminating decimal expansion. So, we can check. Here, the denominator, you will have only 2 power. 5 power is, it is missing. So, we can write like this. 5 power 0. 5 power 0 is what I told this one. Anything power 0 value is 1. So, meaning is 1. So, 1 into 2 power 7, you will get this one. So, we can write here 5 power 0. Now, see that one. You will get that format in the denominator. Therefore, what it is? 7 divided by 128 has a terminating decimal expansion. Second question. 21 divided by 15. Is equal to 21 as I am factorizing here. It is 7 into 3. 7 3s are 21 now. So you, you can write 7 into 3 divided by 15. When you factorize 3 table 5. 5 table it is 1. How will you write this one? 3 is how many times? 1 times. So 3 power 1 into 5 is how many times? 1 times. So 5 power 1. Here see that numerator 1 3 is present. Denominator 3 is present. So 3 3 get cancelled. Now you will get 7 divided by 5. That is 5 power 1. Here what is that format is missing? See come to that format P divided by 2 power M into 5 power N. Here 2 power is missing. So instead of that one what we should write 2 power 0. 2 power 0 is what? What is the value? It is 1. So the value we cannot change. We can write 2 power 0 into 5 power 1. Now you will get that format. Therefore 21 divided by 15 has a terminating decimal expansion. Third question, 4, 9 divided by 35. What fraction it is? Mixer fraction they given. That one you should convert it into improper fraction. How will you convert? You multiply this one. 4 into 35, 140. 140 plus 9, 149 divided by 35. Now you will get a 
one fraction that is improper fraction is equal to 149 we cannot factorize so i am written as it is divided by 35 i am factorizing 5 table it is 7 times 7 table it is 1 times so we can write 5 power 1 5 is 1 times no so 5 power 1 7 is 1 times so 7 power 1 our format is what p divided by 2 power m into 5 power n come to this question here it is you will get 5 power into 7 power only you are getting 2 power is missing 7 is coming newly therefore it is not that format so we can write 149 divided by 35 has a non-terminating decimal expansion fourth question 219 divided by 2200 solution that question I am written is equal to the numerator plus 219 divided by the denominator we should factorize 2 table it is 1100 11 table you will get 100 2 table it is 50 2 table it is 25 5 table it is 5 5 table it is 1 in the denominator place 2 2 is how many times it is repeating 1 2 3 so 2 power 3 into 5 is 2 times it is so 5 power 2 into 11 11 is 1 times our format is what p divided by 2 power m into 5 power n here 2 is there 5 is there but 11 is extra is coming so it is not that format therefore 219 divided by 2200 has a non-terminating decimal expansion next we will see that exercise 2.3 the first question represent the following irrational numbers on the number line the question is root 3 what is our question is how to represent uh, root 3 root 3 is a irrational number root 3 is on the number line how to represent the root 3 on the number line this is a diagram i'll teach that one here i'm going to draw how to represent root 3 on the number line take a scale first draw a line segment up to 3 so here start here and draw up to 3 after that make a dot starting and ending give the name a b then extend this line a extended make a arrow mark then from b point extend 1 centimeter mark 1 centimeter here make a dot like this here you should give that name as C now we have, we have to find the midpoint of A C so middle point we should find for A C how will you find by using a perpendicular bisector line perpendicular bisector how will you draw means this is a full segment A C. See here. For this, I am going to draw a perpendicular bisector. Take more than half of this AC. By using compass, take more than half. Draw the arc above and below the line. Then, another side also, you keep it here. And cut the arc. This is perpendicular bisector line. Then joined it here perpendicular bisector line intersect now here make a dot and give the O mark it as O. Next I am going to draw a a semicircle what is the radius here see that one oa distance is equal to oc both are equal the distance you should take in the compass see here from c this up to oc oc next oa the same by using this i am going to draw a semicircle see the compass needle is i placed at o Now I am going to draw a, a semicircle. See here. I 
I drawn the semicircle. Then you draw a line B here, C here. Keep the scale at the point of B. Then straight that is a perpendicular by perpendicular line. So here I am drawing like this. Here give the name as D. Intersect. No, here you should give the name as D. After that, take a scale and join O a D. Like this you join. Then with the compass you should measure B D. That distance you should take B a D. This distance you should take. See here. I am taken up. Then from place the compass needle at B. Draw the arc like this. See here. Place the compass needle at B. Draw the arc like this. This is E you should give. E and P1. Now where it is root 3 is present is this distance that is. B D is equal to B E that is the root 3. See here B D. This distance only we drawn here B E. So this one is uh, root 3. Here B E that is root 3. So B D is equal to B E is equal to root 3. So here it is present on the number line. Next sum we will do root 4.7 we should represent on the number line. The same way take a scale and pencil draw a, a line segment like this. Here I am drawing a, a big line. Then starting I make a dot from that you should mark a distance 4.7. See here. Here start 4.7 here up to this one 4.7 so make a dot this one here give the name as a b this is 4.7 then i told no you should mark after that one centimeter from b and up to this mark one centimeter here give the name as c after that what we should do draw a semicircle for that we should find midpoint of AC. How will you find the midpoint of AC? By using perpendicular bisector line. So we should draw perpendicular bisector line of AC. Now I am going to draw a perpendicular bisector line. For that we should do take more than half of AC. See here keep the compass needle at the end of C or A. Here I am taking more than half. See here this distance up to this one I am taking. This is more than half. Draw the arc above the line. Then below the line. The same distance. Keep it at starting of this line. That is A. Draw the arc. Here also draw the arc. Then take a scale and pencil. And draw the perpendicular line. This is a perpendicular line I draw. This is the midpoint of AC. So make a dot. Give that O. Next I am going to draw a semicircle. For that we should take the distance of OA or OC. Because both the distance are equal. OA is equal to OC. Keep the compass needle at O extend up to A or C because both the distance are same like this you should take after that keep the compass needle at O and draw a, a semi circle like this draw the semi circle like this then where you mark the B point no that place you keep the scale like this draw a perpendicular like this line a straight line is it is a perpendicular 
so this is we are drawing here intersecting on that a circle point no here you give that name is d make a dot give the point as d after that again you take a scale and join o d like this you should join then take a compass and measure b d distance that distance should take in that compass see here i have taken and keep the compass needle at b draw the arc like this the arc should be touches on the number line like this you should draw here where it is touching now give that name as e make a dot give that name as e now what it is bd is equal to be bd is equal to be the distance is 4.7 4. root of 4.7 so bd this is root 4.7 here this one is be 4.7 root of 4.7 that's all I thought two problem, that two problem do it in your classwork note. Don't draw in that German note. You should do in the classwork note. And third problem is a homework. Thank you students.